fellow YouTubers, welcome to the Daily Digestion Channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Rejuvelac. Well, you might be saying, what the heck is Rejuvelac? Well, Rejuvelac is where you take um, some type of grain and you soak it in water and you wait for the water to ferment and then you drain off the water and you drink it or you use it for seed cheeses or smoothies or whatever. And basically, you can even add this to, you can make coconut yogurt out of it. I mean, you can do just about anything with this stuff. You can um, put it in, um, you can make coconut buttermilk. I mean, you know, you can just do just about anything. Um, so, basically, um, Ann Wigmore came out with this back in the 60s uh, during the health food movement that she pioneered. I mean, that woman is truly amazing. If you don't know who she is, go look her up, read her books. She, she started the vegan movement. I mean, if anybody started it, Ann Wigmore did. And uh, she was a humanitarian and she, basically that's where all of this stuff came from. You know, it was, Ann Wigmore was the pioneer that spurred all of this on. I mean, this woman traveled the world getting the information out there. And this was during a time where, you know, we didn't have the internet. It, there wasn't a lot of people. Um, talking about these sort of things people were just totally hooked on the white flour and the processed foods and they were just sick and dying and um, you know they didn't really know why well this woman Ann Wigmore just to give you an example my mother was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 32 and she was in a Piggly Wiggly grocery store and um, found one of her pamphlets and started doing a regimen and she didn't have to have surgery. She did M. Wigmore's protocol, which is the wheatgrass juice, the sprouted grains, uh, the sprouted uh, living foods, um, and ju vegetable juices, all the things that uh, she talks about in her protocol. In Ann Wigmore's book called um, Ann Wigmore's Recipes for Longer Life, this is one of my favorite books and recipe books. It's amazing. It's got everything in it. Um, this is what Dr. Kuhl, a German researcher, um, had to say in this book. The natural lactic acid and fermentation enzymes which are produced during the fermentation process have a beneficial effect on the metabolism and a curative effect on disease. Lactic acid destroys harmful intestinal bacteria and contributes to the better digestion and assimilation of the nutrients. Fermented foods can be considered pre-digested foods. They are easily digested and assimilated even by persons with weak digestive organs. Fermented foods improve the, di the intestinal tract and provide a proper environment for the body's own vitamin production within the intestines. They also help a person with constipation problems. And down here it says rejuvelac the enzyme drink you know and it goes on to just say more guys this is a great book if you can get this book it tells you thoroughly how to make rejuvelac which I'm gonna make some more videos on how to make it but it's this is just a great book um, you know you can make a drink out of it you can uh, you can put a little bit of ginger and honey in it she recommends in her um, in her living foods regimen that you t drink about two glasses a day of Rejuvelac. So basically you want to keep this on hand and have it in your fr refrigerator at all times. Um, it's just, it's truly amazing. Um, so 
In this video, we're going to discuss, um, I'm going to pull out some studies that I found and um, I'm going to show you some of the science behind Rejuvelac and how it's beneficial for your gut. And basically, you know, there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. We know a lot of the uh, fertilizers and sprays and pesticides that they spray on the uh, foods that we're eating, you know, when we go out to eat at restaurants where it's not organic or whatever, or if you're just eating non-organic food, you're being exposed to these pesticides that kill off the good bacteria in your gut. So not only that, we're constantly being exposed to chemicals in the air and all kinds of uh, bad things that are causing this bad bacteria to thrive within our bodies. And um, the bad bacteria is not what is in the Rejuvelac. Um, this has the good bacteria. And if you outweigh the bad bacteria with good bacteria, your body is gonna be healthy and you're gonna be in a state of homeostasis and which is what we all want to be thriving to, um, you know, to have in our bodies. So, um, that being said, let's get into the information and uh, let's This start. information is taken out of Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. And she has a little recipe in here on how to make Rejuvelac. This is what it says about Rejuvelac. No sooner had we concluded the formalities of taking possession of the island than people began to, be, to come to the beach. They are all well-built people with handsome bodies and very fine faces. Though their appearance is marred somewhat by very broad heads and foreheads, more so than I have ever seen in any other race. Their eyes are large and very pretty. These are tall people, and their legs with no exceptions are quite straight, and none of them has a paunch. They are in fact well proportioned. These lands are very fertile. They are full of Niamis, sweet potatoes, which are like carrots and taste like chestnuts. They have beans very different from ours. These fields are planted mostly with ajays, maniac yucca, or tapioca. The Indians sow little shoots from which small roots grow that look like carrots. They serve this as bread by grating and kneading it and then baking it in the fire. More than 120 canoes came to the ships today. They all brought something, especially their bread and fish, small earthen jars of water and seeds of many good kinds of spices. Some of these seeds they put in a gourd full of water and drank it, and the Indians with me said that this is very healthy. I think that another 500 swam to the ships because they did not have canoes and we were anchored three miles from land. And this was translated by Robert H. Fusen from the log of Christopher Columbus. So guys, there you have it. Um, it says in here that some of these seeds they put in a gourd full of water and drank it. And the Indians with me said that this is very healthy. So fermented foods is something that people have used for hundreds of thousands of years. This is nothing new guys. This is something that people have been doing for a very long time. So it's not like this is some new fad or something new. This is just a way to be healthy, okay? So if these primitive people were doing this back in Christopher Columbus, Columbus's day, and you know, I think this is probably something that we should be incorporating into our diets as well. Not to mention the fact that Ann Wigmore um, healed a lot of people 
um, with using the Rejuvelac. Um, she healed a lot of people from AIDS, um, all kinds of incurable diseases, cancer, and um, you know. In this article on preventive nutrition and food science, a review of fermented foods with beneficial effects on brain and cognitive function. Around the world, fermentation of foods has been adopted over many generations, primarily due to their commercial significance and enriched flavors and high-profile nutrients. The increasing application of fermented foods is further promoted by recent evidence. On, on their health benefits beyond the traditional recognized effects on the digestive system. With recent advances in the understanding of gut-brain interactions, there also have been reports suggesting the fermented foods efficacy, particularly for cognitive function improvements. These results are strengthened by the proposed biological effects of fermented foods including neuroprotection against neurotoxicity and reactive oxygen species. This paper reviews the beneficial effect, health effects of fermented foods and particularly in particular emphasis on cognitive enhancement and neuroprotective effects. With an extensive review of fermented foods and their potential, potential cognitive benefits this paper may promote commercially feasible applications of fermented foods as natural remedies to cognitive problems. So there you have it folks. Um, you know, we've all heard about the, um, the gut and the, the brain and how it's all affected and how there's hormones, the same hormones that are released in our brain are released in our gut as well. So all of this is connected, guys. Our, you know, the cognitive function of our brain and our gut is tied together. So if you wanna know more about it, just look that art article up. You can Google it yourself and read all of the, uh, the scientific uh, data to back all of that information up. Here's another uh, publication in Frontiers in Microbiology. Uh, fermented foods, are they tasty medicines for Helicobacter pylori associated with peptic ulcer and gastric cancer? And here's the people that uh, wrote this article. Here's the abstract. It says more than a million people die every year due to gastric cancer and peptic ulcer. Helico Helicobacter pylori infection in stomach is the most important reason for these diseases. Okay, that's a bad bacteria, guys. Interesting, interestingly, only 10 to 20% of the H. pylori infected individuals suffer from these gastric diseases and rest, and rest of the infected individuals re remain asymptomatic. The genotypes of H. pylori most host genetic background lifestyle include smoking and diet may determine clinical outcomes. People from different geographical regions have different food habits which also includes several unique fermented products of plant and animal origins. When consumed raw, the fermented foods bring in fresh inocula of microbes to gastro gastrointestinal tract and several, several strains of these microbes, like lactobacillus and saccharomyces, are all are known probiotics and the lactobacillus guys that is what is in the rejuvelac in vitro and in vivo experiments as well as clinical trials suggest that several probiotics have anti h pylori effects guys that's the bad bacteria so these good 
beneficial rejuvelac microbes, they um, they get rid of the bad uh, pylori. Here we discuss the possibility of using natural probiotics present in traditional fermented foods and beverages to obtain protection against H. pylori induced gastric diseases. So there you have it guys. The proof is in the research. So guys, the uh, Rejuvelac then, you know, is a great way to get that good bacteria into your gut to outweigh all the bad bacteria out of your gut. So, but you know, don't take my word for it and don't take the slanted a research word for it you know or all of these other books try it for yourself you know the proof is in the pudding and you know I have actually been drinking the Rejuvelac and um, and I've been using it for quite some time it is amazing to make um, nut cheeses and guys, it's a trustworthy way to make your own probiotics. A lot of times when you go buy these probiotics, these really, really expensive probiotics, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know how long it was sitting in the hot truck before it got to the uh, health food store, or you know, you order them from Amazon and then it comes on the truck and goodness knows where that's been and how long it sat there or whatever. I mean, you know, we really don't know. So um, this is a great way to get your good uh, beneficial bacteria. And you can also use this as an aid to making sauerkraut um, or fermented vegetables. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, this is why you want to take the Rejuvelac as a daily regimen uh, for a beneficial digestive uh, flora within the body and as a digestive aid to um, help your body digest its food better. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.